Hello again. In this recording, I'm going to demonstrate in R uh, the code for running uh, a test for equal variances. That's the Bartlett test. Uh, and then we'll uh, perform the testing for normality using the Shapiro test. That will show us that our data set is um, not normal. So uh, we would have to perform a non-parametric one way, uh, and this will be the between group ANOVA. Okay, so again, rather than typing, I saw a comment on one uh, person's R recording that uh, they would prefer not to hear all the keyboard typing, and now I realize uh, it's if I save it in the scripts and give you time to see what's uh, being used, uh, I don't have to type, and you can uh, have time to see it, pause, and type yourself if you're if you're trying to practice as we go. Uh, anyway, uh, the the Bartlett test is uh, laid out in this fashion. This is my uh, source for this a video on YouTube. And in the example, the p-value was 0.93, so we fail to reject the hypothesis, uh, and we assume homogeneity of variances. Uh, in the, another, the p-value is uh, less than 0.5, so we reject it, and that would mean that they are uh, unequal variances. So this is not so necessary to determine whether it's normal or not normal. Uh, but uh, there are ways of selecting their testing for t-tests and ANOVAs uh, as to whether you have an equal variance or unequal variance. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to uh, read a file. So I'm going to open a file that I have uh, variances. So I run that. Come to my R files here. And variances. So we now have that. And uh, let me just show you what's in there. So what we have is uh, a diet, actually it's a, a meal challenge, and then a biomarker. Uh, and the different meals were different types of fatty acids, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and saturated fatty acids. Uh, and then they took a baseline measurement for each, and then four hours postprandial after they had eaten the meal. And then this is the level of this um, metabolite, farnesyl pyrophosphate. Okay, so that's the table we're working with. And we run the Bartlett on that, referring to the FPP column. Uh, and, and notice that it's uh, splitting on the description. Right? And the description was the this here. Right? That column is... Oh. I need to just change this here real quick. Diet description, right? <laughs> it's got to match our column name or it won't work. Okay. So now if I run this, it should work because it matches our column name. I'm glad I looked at the, I double checked the column name. Uh, so the Bartlett test of homogeneity of variances, uh, FPP by diet description. And we have a very significant p value, so uh, we do not uh, have equal variances. Okay, now to test for normality, I have another file. Um, and uh, there's a, a video uh, listed here uh, on YouTube that uh, uh, assisted me with this, and I also used a, a text reference, uh, a manual for uh, R on this one. So in this one, we'll open the normality uh, skeletal muscle one. So I'm running this again, calling the table X this time. Our files, normality. Okay, and let's just take a look at that. So this is the, the same, uh, same data set 
except I split it uh, so that the uh, you know, the description one for the baseline and a description two for the postprandial. Uh, and uh, I named all the uh, the postprandial uh, columns uh, with a two. So you see we have FPP2 and FPP1 in this case. So in the table above, it was all in one sequence. Okay, so everything depends upon how you have your table set up. So now I'm going to run the Shapiro to test the FPP1, the, the um, baseline. Okay, and that is uh, significant. So again, with this, if you get a, uh, a P less than 05, indicates that the population is likely not normally distributed, and a P greater than 05 uh, provides no such evidence. So you have to get a P greater than 5 uh, to consider it a normally distributed uh, data set. And then we can run it for the second column or the, the postprandial results. All right, so neither one of ours, uh, baseline or postprandial, uh, are uh, normally distributed. Now notice what I didn't break it down into is the different uh, types of fatty acids for normality. So it may be that uh, it's normally distributed for one or more of these, but I just grouped them all together. Again, it all depends on how you uh, what type of information you put in your columns um, to, to separate them out and you know which uh, columns you're referring to uh, to to break it out all right so we'd have to break all these out into separate columns if we're going to run and then run one separately we'd have an FPP one two three four five six seven eight however many uh, we, we have a pre and post and then three diets, so there would be, what, six columns? And you'd have to run it on each of the six columns. Anyway, so that's how that would work. Uh, again, in here, I, I group data quite often, when I probably shouldn't be, uh, just to make the demonstration of how this is working. So this is just testing whether uh, this collective group um, that were challenged by a fatty acid meal uh, postprandially, it was normally distributed. Okay. And if each was, I imagine the whole thing might be, unless they were, uh, we had uh, truly a trimodal um, effect. But in the original article where I found this, they've got no significant difference between the, uh, the types of fatty acids, so that's why I pulled them together here. Um, and then we can do a histogram of each of these. And so here we see, and we've got this in way out here, so it's, uh, it's, de it's definitely skews uh, to the lower end, to the left end. For FPP1, come over here, I'll hit the up arrow, and change this to the 2, and we get the histogram for 2, and it seems to be skewed even a little more, it looks like there's an outlier there. Okay. So the, the next is this the non-parametric uh, one-way. So here's the, uh, the the link to the video where I watched this, and, and they used uh, their own data set and ultimately ran a, a Tukey's at the end of it. Um, although that's... Well, they do a, a, a Wilcox first and then a, a Tukey. The Wilcox is the actual uh, parametric. Uh, so the Krusko-Wallace is the... Uh, the non-parametric one-way between group ANOVA and then the pairwise uh, Wilcoxon test is usually run after that. Okay, so i um, going to be using the uh, variances uh, again. That file. I know I've already opened it, but I'm just going through it again. Okay, and then we can get a summary of that. 
So we pulled in that file, the variances again called it V this time. Um, the only column that would make any sense to look at this data is uh, the FPP. You can see this one where those uh, T equals 0 H was the text in the column. Well, I counted those. There's 28 of those and 28 of these, so that's how many we have. Um, well, here's our age data, if we wanted to look at that, the age column. Of course, these there's just one of each of these. These are the uh, original identification uh, of each subject. Here's the subject by number, six in each one. And then uh, 20 other ones uh, that are shown. Um, and then 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 6. So it's showing 26 there. Eh? Um, and then for the, the diets, there's 20 MUFA, 20 PUFA, and 20 uh, SFA. So we can see that uh, we have a dropout of two in the PUFAs and a dropout of two in the SFAs. So this is what this type of stuff can tell us. And we've got an equal number of baseline and postprandial. Uh, so that's what that uh, can accomplish. Now if I just want to do the summary of the FPP, then we get just this information right here repeated again. Mean, median, third quartile, first quartile, minimum and maximum. Okay, we can run a box plot on this. I'll just stretch it out here. Okay. So this lets us assess um, a few things. We see outliers, two outliers in this group outliers and the, the others over here so that might be part of our problems uh, for the uh, histograms that we've shown before but this lets us look at the median the first quartile and the third quartile uh, and we see there's an uneven distribution here especially here 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 this looks symmetrical so this might be the only one that would have passed the normality if we tested it alone all the others probably would have failed the test for normality so that's what the box plot uh, tells us and again the box plot is what you typically will what you should be uh, graphing if you're doing a, a dis displaying the data this way uh, because the uh, non-parametrics test only the medians is this median different from this median so the pairwise comparison we're going to do next will only look at the the Uh, we'll run the ANOVA first, <laughs> and then the pairwise comparison will uh, compare the medians of those. So there, here's the Krusko-Wallis, and we, um, uh, we can see the information that's here. Um, what we jump right to, of course, is uh, is the P less than 0.05, the uh, alpha that we set. Uh, and yes, it is. So then that gives us permission to do the pairwise comparison. Uh, and we are adjusting our p-value using the Bonferroni method. And uh, so this is the pairwise Wilcoxon test uh, shown here. And we have MUFA postprandial versus MUFA baseline, so 0 0.03. That is significant. And SFA, let's see. SFA postprandial post versus baseline, that one seems to be significant. So if we come back here, this is, was significantly different and the MUFA was significantly different, but this was not significantly different. Those are the only three comparisons that are of any relevance in this table. So we read the column by the row. So this MUFA MUFA post versus baseline uh, and this SFA post versus baseline and where's the PUFA PUFA? PUFA Base, let's see, PUFA postprandial <laughs> versus PUFA baseline, and there is no significant difference there. Okay, and I think the last thing we did over here was uh, 
wasn't there an 